Hi everyone, today I'll be testing the continuous high-speed shutter mode in my Olympus OMD cameras. And basically what I'll be doing is uh, putting the camera into shutter priority at 1 250th of a second and then holding the shutter button down for 10 seconds to see how many frames we captured in that 10 second window. Uh, we'll also get a chance to hear actually when the camera starts to buffer or when the buffer gets full and those frames per second start to slow down. Uh, as well as um, the differences between using a UHS-1 card and a UHS-2 card. Uh, because all these cameras are capable of using UHS-2 cards, which isn't mentioned uh, enough, particularly with the EM-10 Mark II. Uh, so I do have the uh, benchmarks for my uh, SD cards that I'll be using. Uh, it's a free software you can download. It's called Crystal Disk Mark or something, so that you can benchmark your own SD cards if you like. Uh, but I thought it'd be impo it's important to see how fast the memory cards that I'll be using in this test if you want to compare this with your camera that you have now. So I'll put some links down below to the SD cards that I recommend. Uh, but generally speaking, UHS-2 cards, they cost a lot more, but they really make a big difference in the performance of your camera. So let's go ahead and get started and see what we get. So just a quick overview of the exact test I'll be doing is I'm going to put the camera into continuous high speed burst. So that'll be like 8 frames per second on the M10 Mark II. It might be 15 frames per second on the M1 Mark II and III. And then I'll be shooting in single point autofocus so the camera only has to focus one time. And um, I'll be shooting in three different modes. Uh, RAW, RAW plus JPEG, and JPEG only. And for the JPEGs, I'll be using large superfine, uh, the maximum quality JPEG setting in the camera. And also, uh, for my target, I'm just going to use my color card here so we sort of get a nice uh, average file size. Because if I took a picture of, say, just a black scene or a totally white scene, where I've seen some people just make this test using a lens cap on the camera, uh, the file sizes tend to be kind of small. Uh, particularly the JPEGs when you do something like that. So I thought this would be a little more realistic. And again, I'll be testing uh, all those modes on each of these two different cards. All right, let's start with the M10 Mark II. I have a freshly charged Olympus original battery at the 17 millimeter F1.8. And I'm in shutter priority 1 250 of a second with the UHS-1 card in here. And first we'll start with the raw only uh, burst mode. Okay, just under two seconds it started the buffer. All right. And then right about 15 seconds uh, to flush the buffer. And let's see how many images we got. We got 42 images. Let's do raw plus JPEG. So we'll be doing large superfine plus JPEG. Wow, one and a half seconds. And 17 seconds to flush the buffer. And we captured 31 images. All right, let's do JPEG only. Large Superfine. and start. Alright, let's try with the UHS-2 card. Because if you didn't know, the EM-10 Mark II does support uh, UHS-2. So about two and a half seconds before we hit the buffer. About one and a half seconds before we hit the buffer. All right. OK, 
Okay, that buffered right a little over one second. Wow, definitely less than one second before that buffer hit. Oh, that's much better. Oh, less than one second before it hit that buffer. Much better. It's buffering, but it's writing, it's going through much faster. All right, EM5 Mark III. So about three and a half seconds. Just under four seconds. All right, UHS-2, raw only. So about four and a half seconds. So about 4.2 seconds. To the EM1 Mark III with UHS-1 continuous high, and this is a 15 frame per second high-speed mechanical shutter. And raw only. Holy smoke, sounds like a machine gun. Buffered it right at four seconds.
buffered it just under four seconds. Alright, now we have the UHS-2, raw only, on the M1 Mark III. At about five seconds. So four seconds. I put all the data together in a spreadsheet so we can do some comparison. So let me just give you a quick overview. Uh, basically, here's the M10 Mark II. And the first row here represents how long it took for the buffer to fill up. So in this case, 2.1 seconds. And then how long did it take to flush the buffer and write all of those images to the memory card or SD card? In this case, after I let go of the shutter after 10 seconds, it took 5.6 seconds to uh, write all those uh, pictures to the card. And then after 10 seconds, how many images did we capture in total? So we captured 42 in total. And then that theme uh, follows all the way down here between our UHS-1 and our UHS-2 cards with the various settings between RAW, RAW plus JPEG, or just JPEG only. And I think as you can see here, if you shoot only JPEG when you're using the continuous high-speed shutter, uh, we're pretty much achieving the maximum frame rate capable from the you know capable of the camera uh, so 8.5 frames per second in 10 seconds we captured 83 pictures so that's effectively 8.3 frames per second and what was interesting is on the m5 mark ii buffer filled up very quickly and uh, as a result we captured far fewer frames than even the em10 mark ii now it kind of makes sense because the EM10 Mark II came out after the EM5 Mark II did, so they probably got some complaints or something, and they just increased the buffer on the EM10 Mark II. Uh, and it seems like it's very well optimized because even with the UHS-1 card, we are able to achieve the uh, maximum frames per second that this camera is capable of. Whereas on the EM5 Mark II, you can see clearly that it's falling behind because of that very small buffer. So here I just put the data together in a graphical form, only looking at the total number of frames captured in 10 seconds. And uh, you can see that for JPEG, for example, there really wasn't much difference between UHS-1 and UHS-2. But using uh, RAW, there were some substantial increases here from RAW, from UHS-1 to UHS-2, both RAW and RAW plus JPEG. And then to look at this as a percentage, uh, you can see that, especially on the M5 Mark III, got an 80% increase using UHS-2 versus UHS-1 when we were shooting RAW. And when we were shooting RAW plus JPEG, we were seeing roughly 55% improvement. And then this last group here shows you that a UHS-1 versus UHS-2, when you're shooting only JPEG, there's very, very little difference. So hopefully I gave you some data points there to help you make a better decision about whether you need a UHS-2 card or not. I think generally speaking, if you shoot in continuous high-speed shutter mode at any time, uh, investing in a UHS-2 card makes sense. And I'll, I have links down below to the ones that I recommend. Uh, also, you know, the data points will help you make a decision about whether you want to upgrade your camera for the continuous high-speed shutter. And clearly, I think the M1 Mark II and the M1 Mark III are uh, very well suited for that uh, type of photography, sports action, birds in flight. Although the M5 Mark III did have a good showing, but that 10 frames per second is still a slight limitation, right? You're only going to capture, say, 100 frames in 10 seconds. 
Now in a future video, I'm gonna do some tests with the uh, Pro Capture modes that are available on the EM5 Mark III and the M1s. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you like this content and you'd like to see more, you know, consider subscribing to the channel. But either way, hopefully we'll see you again soon.